Sustainable Global Energy Access. One Community Weekly Progress Update, number 334. One Community is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We are creating open source and free shared blueprints and resources, tools and tutorials, and do-it-yourself instructions for highest good living. Creating solution models that create additional solution creating models in the service of all life on this planet. My name is Jay Sable and I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 nonprofit organization. This is our weekly progress update number 334, August 18th, 2019 edition. What One Community is doing is bringing together people with a consciousness for the highest good of all life on this planet and building self-replicating and sustainable teacher demonstration hubs as a pathway to global sustainability. And today what I want to talk about is sustainable global energy access. Because a lot of people don't realize, but a third of the world's population still doesn't have access to power. Can you believe that? That's amazing. I mean, in this day, when we have solar panels that can be put up anywhere, we no longer need centralized energy. Uh, we have microgrids that we can build. We no longer need to be getting our power from a specific company that's providing it all over a country. We can build a microgrid and provide our power locally, but they don't have the resources to make that happen. And so sustainable global energy access from a one community perspective is possible if we can create motivation for people to take the resources that already exist for creating that to the places that need it the most. And the engine for doing that already exists. It's cheaper to build in other countries. It's easier to build in other countries from a regulation perspective, but there's not necessarily a big enough drive right now to want to do that. And so one community and everything that you see happening in the background of this video is creating a solution to that, a driver for that. And that driver is teacher demonstration communities, villages, cities, and hubs designed to provide a way of life that is better than the way that most people are living right now. And it does that by taking the physical foundations of sustainability, their food, energy, and housing, combines them with emotional foundations of sustainability, which we've identified are high good education models, high good economic models, fulfilled living practices, and true earth stewardship. And it puts all these things together into a living model that meets and surpasses the needs of everybody living there, eliminates people's bills because it's built on sustainable infrastructure, generates revenue by sharing itself, inviting people to participate and live there, and provides the complete social architecture, the recreational model, and the education model that's superior to what almost everybody in the world is experiencing right now. We have the ability to create a club med, a, a uh, cruise type situation, a recreational bonanza, a recreational smorgasbord all in one place through our social architecture models and building sustainable communities, villages, cities, and hubs that invite people to participate and come experience them. And so we can build cities of three, 400 people that can provide everything that everyone living there needs while simultaneously teaching other people how to replicate that. And the more those cities and communities, villages and hubs are working towards sharing what it is that they do and teaching other people how to replicate what it is that they do, the more successful they can be. It doesn't have to be that way. Like people can just build these things for themselves and, and live off grid and create a survivalist community or a prepper community or just an eco utopia for themselves. But if they share it, if they help other people and because it meets the needs of everybody, it really leverages the reality that we are an empathic civilization, that we are loving people. Humanity wants to help people when it's not under stress, duress, or threat, or pressure. When people have enough, research has shown over and over again that people will help other people. And so our whole community model is designed to do that. It's to give people enough, to give people a surplus, and also build it as an engine designed specifically to help others to help other people, to be able to give it away when you have more than you need, to share it, to teach others. And in so doing, we can create a global cooperative, a global collaborative, and sustainable global energy access for people everywhere by bringing those energy infrastructure hubs to different communities that need them, building that infrastructure, teaching other people how to do it, and creating a sufficient revenue stream to expand indefinitely. In so doing, we can create a global cooperative and collaborative of people working together for the highest good of all life on this planet, and sustainable global energy access would just be a natural result of all of that. Does that make sense? This is what we're doing. This is what one community is doing. And so we're creating the tools, the tutorials, the resources, and do-it-yourself instructions for all of that. And we're demonstrating, we're creating it to be easy enough, affordable enough, and demonstrate as attractive enough so the idea will spread its own. 
and that attraction and have one community as the first model where people can come and visit and experience what it is that we're creating. And if they like what they see, to take it and go and replicate it. And because it's easier to replicate in other countries, more affordable to replicate, there are certain barriers that people won't want to deal with, and those barriers don't exist in other countries. Now, the distance could be a barrier that people don't want to deal with, and so it's designed to meet U.S. Uh, standards to be able to be permitted within the United States, but and so it's safe. So if people use our plans and design them and build them elsewhere, they'll be safe for other locations, but they won't have the same restrictions. So if people want to build here, great. If people want to build in other countries, wonderful. There's lots of benefits to doing that, and one community is trying to create something for everybody. And so this is our path to sustainable global energy access, and everybody's invited to participate. And so with that said, we are an all-volunteer, 100% unpaid, non-profit, non-governmental organization, and uh, this is how we're creating world change. And so here is one week of our all-volunteers team's progress and accomplishments. Uh, this is our progress and accomplishments for last week. Check it out. The one community approach to highest good housing is eco-artistic home building that is affordable, sustainable, do-it-yourself duplicable, resource and space efficient, and consists of seven different sustainably constructed village models. This week, the core team finished the rest of the content for the most sustainable insulation options page. This week, we added the resources, summary, and FAQ sections. You can see all these additions here, and this brings this page to 100% complete. Brianna Olson, sustainability researcher, also completed her 10th week as a member of the team. This week, she continued research for the most sustainable faucet options by formatting her past work into the existing table and continuing the research and refinement process on the remaining company products. You can see some of this work here. One community is also creating an open source duplicable city center. It is designed to be LEED Platinum certified, provide 12 guest rooms, dining for over 150 people, and laundry and recreation space for over 300 people, all while saving money, time, space, and resources. This week, U Chiao Zhang, architectural designer and drafter, completed his 11th week helping update the city center AutoCAD and SketchUp files and designing the rainwater harvesting system. This week, he finished the 3D gutter system design, updated the calculation for the new rainwater harvesting system, picked proper products with sufficient capacity, and updated the living room restroom designs to provide ADA bathrooms and shower enclosures. Ron Wang, mechanical engineer, continued with his 15th week working on the energy modeling for our LEED Platinum certification and City Center open source HVAC design tutorial. This week he continued revising and testing the new hydronic HVAC system. You can see some of this work here. Sneha Dongre, structural engineer, also continued with her 20th week helping with the Dubuque City Center structural details. This week's focus was continued work creating the sliding door entryway frames and correcting and cross-checking angles and lengths of columns and beams in AutoCAD. Kimya Azermard, senior plumbing engineer, additionally continued with his second week as a member of the team. Kimya's focus this week was initial standardization planning for the city center plumbing AutoCAD files. One community's approach to highest good food is duplicable almost anywhere, scalable for different needs, more biodiverse and nutritious, part of forwarding a global open source botanical garden collaborative, and includes nine different free shared and duplicable growing environments. This week, the core team continued with week 21 of our development of the open source dams, lakes, and water retention landscape design tutorial. This week, we created all the separate SketchUp files and added download links for each of them. The core team also continued developing the behind the scenes content for the open source permaculture design page. This week's focus was formatting everything written so far and adding in the SWOT analysis details. You can see some of this work here. And the core team continued cost analysis details for the 100 chicken coop. This week we researched all the materials and created the spreadsheet shown here. The core team also created the initial page design and social media imagery for what will be the open source sheep hub. And last but not least, the core team continued researching sheep and incorporating what we learned into the behind the scenes sheep tutorial Google Doc shown here. 
One community's approach to high is good education is designed for all age groups, adaptable to any schooling environment, inspiring and fun for all participants, includes national standards, all subjects, lesson plans, teaching strategies, learning strategies and tools, classroom design, and more. With eight years invested in designing it, this component of one community is pretty much complete until we move on to the property and continue to develop it with teachers and students. Completed sections include comprehensive subject outlines covering arts and trades, English, health, math, science, social sciences, technology and innovation, and values. Also, 52 weekly themed lesson plans covering all the subjects we just mentioned, all learning levels and ages, and usable in any learning environment. 12 detailed and progressive curriculum outlines are also complete, summaries and integration of all the best known alternative education programs including Montessori, Waldorf, ORF, Regio, and more, and leadership skills, collaborative assessment formats and forums, a global online free education resource hub, classroom design, and more. Guy Grossfeld, graphic designer, continued with week five of his work adding people and object additions to the redesigned and re-rendered sections of the Ultimate Classroom. Here are the last two drafts from Guy. They show two more main room perspectives. Dan Ellick, designer and illustrator, also completed his 51st week helping. Here you can see his continued development of the Orange Room. The one community approach to highest good society is globally focused, individually enriching, cooperative and collaborative, includes a highest good network and application, four different economic models, and combines fulfilled living and true earth stewardship for the benefit of all people and all life on this planet. This week, the core team created our new privacy page and cookies compliance footer shown here. This brings us into compliance with the EU users' rights under the new General Data Protection Regulation. The core team also updated our entire volunteer onboarding and information page set. This included the collaboration page and application, promotion page, win-win page, and compensation page. You can see some of the updates here. Emilio Nahara, digital marketer, also continued with his 41st week as part of the marketing team by launching all the highest good of all subgroup campaigns, creating and adding extensions for our campaigns, and researching a new accelerator program Google is offering. You can see some of this work here. There you have it. There's one week of our team's progress and accomplishments working towards the goal of sustainable global energy access. If you'd like to see more details, more specifics, links to all the open source content, you can visit our written blog. If you'd like to see an email every time one of these updates comes out, you can send an email to onecommittyupdates at gmail.com and we'll add you to our newsletter list. And if you'd like to help out, you can visit our helping page. And the easiest way to help out is to join us on social media, to like this YouTube video, uh, and to join us on social media, like our, our posts there, help us share our information, go to our website, share whatever you like most there. We're on all the different social media networks to make it as easy as possible. We are on Facebook, we are on Tumblr, we are on Pinterest, we're on Reddit, we're on uh, Instagram, we are on LinkedIn, and about 15 other social media networks to make it as easy as possible to access and share our information, help us out there. Uh, donations are always appreciated. We're, like I said, we're 100% unpaid team, so all donations go to forwarding our open source goals. You can visit our uh, website and click the donations button if you'd like to help out there. If you already donated, thank you so much. It makes a big difference. And uh, yeah, that's all I've got for you for this week. Thanks for following our progress. Thanks for watching to the end. Until next week, we will, of course, keep on keeping on. Thank you.